in the previous video we retrieved an azure key vault secret from the azure portal and then we displayed that value in an api call in this video we're going to demonstrate how to show a specific version of a key vault secret which you might use in a legacy system remember we created a secret client using a key vault url defined in our app settings here yeah? then we use the default azure credential to retrieve a credential from the cli if we're in development but if we're not in development to retrieve it from a managed identity whether it's a system assigned managed identity or a user assigned managed identity now by default the get secret async method actually retrieves the latest version of the secret in this case it'll be this particular version here Let's say we want to continue using this version for a legacy system that we have, but create a new version for a new application. Let's set the expiration date on this particular secret. Save changes. Changes are saved. Let's create a new version. enter the secret value let's create it it's created now that it's created you'll see by default it's set as the current version and the one that we set the expiration date on is enabled still but it expires what we're going to do is copy the old version's id let's just copy this or you can just click on the ellipse and then copy title to clipboard this is the hash of the previous version for the legacy system we're going to use it let's just duplicate this line legacy copy it over now the get secret async method is able to take two or three parameters if we don't want the defaults first of all the name of the secret secondly the version id of the secret and the cancellation token that we don't need currently what we're going to demonstrate now is although the secret name is the same the values will not be the same let's just put this in a variable control period let's generate a field it will be a constant with the value of the secret's name okay use it here as well perfect let's first demonstrate this without displaying the legacy value let's debug this this will launch a browser and display the swagger page if we click on this api method try it out execute oh nice the azure cli authentication timed out good opportunity to show how to resolve this especially in development so just go to your command prompt after installing the azure cli just type az login This will open a browser. There we go. We have authenticated. We can close this tab. Let's retry. There we go. Now it works perfectly. And this is the latest version of our SQL connection string. Now let's show the older version of the connection string. We're just going to display this variable in a property. The reason why we're including these question marks is we don't want null reference exceptions. 
So if SQL connection string legacy is now, it'll return now. If SQL connection string legacy dot value is now, it'll return now. Otherwise, it'll just return the value if it has a valid value. Let's create this particular property. Generate variable, generate property. If we go to the generated property, you'll see that it's created here. Let's just remove internal for now. Let's re-debug. Re-debug sounds kinda cool. Our Swagger page is loaded again. Let's try it out. Again. There we go. It worked exactly as we anticipated. The legacy SQL connection string and the new connection string have the same secret name but they have different values because we specified a particular version global unique identifier for our legacy secrets value so that our legacy applications can continue running flawlessly. Let's continue on the next video in the series on Azure Key Vaults.